Hello everyone. Today in our series of Dogplexus Cable interviews, we have with us Dr. Shashank Shah, who is an eminent laparoscopic bariatric surgeon from Pune. He currently holds the position of director at Lapro BCU Center and has more than 35,000 successful surgeries in his account. He is the pioneer of in-lap sleeve gastrectomy in Asia and an authority in laparoscopic gastric bypass and scarless single incision surgery. Dr. Shah is the first ever surgeon to receive prestigious Vivian Fonseca Scholar Award for Research in Diabetes from American Diabetes Association in June this year. Dr. Shah also has his name in Limca Book of Records for doing 45 hernia operations in 10 hours. Thank you, Dr. Shah, for this interview. Nowadays, obesity and diabetes are most important killer diseases in India. What are other comorbidities associated with it, and what are the indications for surgeries in obese patients? Obesity and diabetes are growing, and they go hand in hand. A disease known as diabetes. Unfortunately, India is the world capital of diabetes, and obesity gives rise to diseases of almost every system in the body. It can be lungs, heart, kidneys. It induces hypertension, sleep apnea, osteoarthritis. It can give rise to diabetes, high cholesterol, high triglycerides. It is also known to worsen kidney disease or induce kidney disease and heart disease. In short, it reduces longevity of a person, gives rise to chronic life-threatening conditions, and destroys the overall quality of life and productivity of a person in his life. Anyone who is severely obese, in a sense whose BMI is more than 30 to 32 kilogram per meter square, or anyone who whose abnormal percentage of fat gives rise to diseases which can become life-threatening, like diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension, or something which does not respond to standard medical treatment, probably would be a candidate to receive surgical treatment. This is in short. A metabolic surgical treatment. So, what is the basic difference between laparoscopic gastric bypass and laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy as a definitive surgical procedure for morbid obesity, and which one is superior and why? Actually, laparoscopic gastric bypass was known to be a gold standard for surgery, bariatric surgery for years together. In gastric bypass, a stomach is converted into a small pouch, and an intestinal loop is connected in such a way that The upper part of stomach, as well as the upper part of small intestine, does not come in direct contact with food, and that is why it's called a gastric bypass. Part of the intestine is not in contact. It induces restriction in the form of redu reducing the amount of food consumed, and it also induces malabsorption to some extent, in which fat gets malabsorbed. However, with fat malabsorption, there is some micronutrient malabsorption. There is need for more nutritional checkup. In the form of proteins, vitamins, B12, calcium, magnesium. On the other hand, sleeve gastrectomy is a procedure which started predominantly becoming very popular in Asia. That because it only divides the stomach vertically and removes the curvature of the stomach, which secretes a hunger secreting hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin also has diabetogenic as well as obesogenic properties. So reduction in ghrelin gives rise to anti-obesity and anti-diabetic action. Gastric bypass has a history of more than 40 years, whereas sleeve has a history of last 20-25 years. Both the procedures are appropriate, and they have distinctly different indications. Anyone who has longer duration of <coughs> sorry, anyone who has longer duration of diabetes, or is on insulin, or has a hernia or a reflux, does better with gastric bypass. Super obese, those who are vegetarians, maybe extremes of ages. Unmarried girls probably sleeve gastrectomy is a better option. Dr. Shah, you awarded the most prestigious honor by American Diabetes Association for your research titled "Gastric Bypass Versus Medical or Lifestyle Care for Type 2 Diabetes in South Asians: The Cosmid Randomized Trials." Can you please elaborate some findings of this trial for us? Yes, actually, I am happy to share that this is the first study which was rece which received the Vivian Fonseca Scholar Award. As we all know that gastric bypass is a procedure in done for weight loss. It was seen over years that these patients' diabetes improves or resolves 
with weight loss. It was slowly understood that the action which is responsible for improvement and remission in diabetes is not only weight loss, but in addition there are some weight independent hormonal mechanisms responsible for it. We know that diabetes is a major challenge in India and majority of the patients fall below a BMI of 32. That means, majority of them would not qualify for standard bariatric surgery and many of them because of progression of diabetes would not even live to achieve that BMI. As first ever we try to see whether gastric bypass has a strong anti diabetic action which can treat these cohort of patients. So, this was the first over study done in Asian Indians, where patients with mild to moderate obesity were treated with gastric bypass just to treat their diabetes and it showed that more than 60 percent of the patients in the surgical arm had improvement or remission as against those in the medical arm only 2 percent did better. The overall improvement of diabetes, the overall improvement of all diabetes related comorbidities was far better in surgical options. So, this gave a level 1 evidence to the entire world that yes, this can be one more treatment option for those unfortunate ones who cannot be treated by the best medical treatment. Dr. Shah, you have the credit of operating on one of the youngest boys in the world and to undergo bariatric surgery and also on the heaviest British person to be operated in Asia. What is the difference in strategy to handle a pediatric and an adult patient for laparoscopic bariatric surgery and is age a factor that influences the bariatric surgical outcomes? These are interesting questions and very important for a clinician. Ideally, both these procedures are supposed to be done in very high volume centers and centers which are accredited with centers of excellence. That is because it needs a different team, a different preparation. When you are treating a super obese person, the protocol for preparation is very different. You have to treat him aggressively medically for more than 4 weeks to make sure his sleep apnea is treated, his ambulatory status is better, his ASA risk score is reduced and if the procedure or the abdominal wall compliance should be so low that procedure becomes easier. Reduction of liver size in such people is also very important. So, it is practically a drill for surgeon, anesthetist, physiotherapist clinician all together in addition to the patient and a preparation probably is the secret of safety. The same applies to the younger children. Even though about 9 years back we operated on a 7 and a half year old boy, he was in the ICU with severe respiratory infection and severe sleep apnea. Now, operating in kids is also very different because their compliance, their post operative care has to be very different. I must mention and stress that after the thorough attempt of medical treatment, only then a surgical indication is taken in kids, only when the child is super obese or there are some life threatening conditions or this disease starts delaying the milestones of the child during its growth. So, these are some considerations for the extremes of ages, but utmost care needs to be done in terms of reducing the risk, reducing the liver size. Educating the, educating the patients and preparing the whole team for that surgery. So, minimal invasive surgery is a boon to many complicated surgical cases. So, what are the training facilities that are available in India for young physicians who want to excel in surgery, especially in laparoscopic bariatric surgeries? Yes, I must say as compared to maybe 15, 20 years back when we were learning, we had to go abroad to various centers for learning. Now, each university has started the university accredited fellowships for laparoscopic surgery. There are certain centers in India like ours who, of which offer fellowships in laparoscopic surgery, fellowships in advanced laparoscopic surgery as well as bariatric surgery. I think the organizations like IAGS, AMAC, maybe Association of Surgeons India also have incorporated these into their curriculum and laparoscopy is now a part of training for every surgeon in this basic MS surgery course. I must say that the world is moving towards minimal invasive treatment for every disease and that seems to be the future. 
Dr. Shah, you have contributed to the lesser invasive treatment of myasthenia gravis by total radical thymectomy, which is recognized and also referred in international reference video library of Society of American Gastrointestinal and Endoscopic Surgeries. Can you brief about this unique technique and its potential advantages? See, myasthenia gravis is a disease in which slowly there is paralysis of respiratory or other muscles. By certain secretions from a gland called thymus, which is located below the sternum between the lung, hilum and heart. Conventionally, the procedure was done by a thoracotomy done by cardiac cardiothoracic surgeon. Because of asthenia of respiratory muscle, the recovery was very delayed and the morbidity and mortality was high. Till the time, minimally invasive techniques appeared and we offered a three pot totally thoracoscopic technique of removing the entire thymus and all the fibro fatty tissue right from the level of pericardium to the thyroid. Now, the benefit of this minimally invasive technique is with the advances in endovision and coagulation devices, the procedure can get over in less than an hour, patient does not require ventilatory support and practically can go home in 2 to 3 days time. The acceptance of thymectomies have increased after we started thoracoscopic treatment of myasthenia gravis now this last 14 years. I believe today now every neurologist is aware of this option and patients are getting benefited because of this. So, how do you see the future of laparoscopic bariatric surgery in India and do you, can you please tell us about some innovations in the future that, that are expected to change the landscape of this field? I think we have immense scope for bariatric surgery in India. I believe over 5 million morbidly obese or severely obese Indians need surgery. There are many diabetics who need this procedure. In India, this is probably going to be a metabolic surgery for treatment of diabetes, dyslipidia and metabolic syndrome. So, it is slowly going to change from weight loss surgery to diabetes surgery to treatment of metabolic syndrome. I think it is, it is a radical change. We need more surgeons, we need more training, we need more awareness. We also need better understanding from this and more preventive steps at various levels to prevent progression of diabetes or obesity. There is certain future in this, <coughs> more minimally invasive or endoscopic treatments or better understanding of these procedures can give rise to some invention of hormones or medications which can mimic this surgical procedure. Just like peptic ulcer was a very prominent disease and surgical treatment was the only option wherein the better understanding and study of those operations invented PPIs, antacids and now ulcer has slowly become extinct. I just hope and believe that better application of these surgical procedures and better understanding of physiology and hormonal status can give rise to inventions towards newer drugs or maybe endoscopic procedures which can mimic this surgical procedure. So, as you mentioned that it is very important to understand these procedures. So, do you think an online platform like Docplexus can help empower doctors? I think in today's era of challenging time, travel, distant learning of any type is very useful. Mobile friendly access of knowledge is very useful. We see each one accessing Google for everything. But if there is a specific platform and specific answer to a doctor's question, I believe those who do not have this access, those who cannot attend those conferences or meetings, those are looking at answers from experts. I think this is the best platform where they can just post their questions and get the best relevant information about their ethnicity, about their genetics from the experts from the same country. Thank you, Dr. Shah, for your valuable time and knowledge. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy Dogplexing!